Welcome to boot camp number 24. We've left the infantry rule set far behind. I did consider covering concealment, but that is a huge topic. That could be multiple videos. Uh, what I recommend is getting to know the concealment table really well, because that's what you end up referring to more often than not when you are playing with concealment in ASL scenarios. Maybe someday I'll backtrack and go through the concealment rules. But for now, we're jumping into Chapter C, which is Ordinance. But before I dive deep into the rules of the two-hit process and the two-kill process, or the effects process that follows that, I want to do a just a review of ordinance and the information, the different types of ordinance and the information on the counters. Note that chapter C actually begins with off-board artillery. That's yet another topic that's fairly complicated, but it's a topic that's a little esoteric because not every scenario has off-board artillery. Very few, I won't say few, the minority of scenarios have uh, has off-board artillery. But a lot of scenarios have guns of some type that require you to use the two-hit process, whether it's support weapons like bazookas and Panzerfaust, or ordnance like I'm showing here, or vehicles, which are basically ordnance or guns that move. They're essentially, they use the same two-hit process. There's just different modifiers, and they can move around much more readily than uh, most ordnance. So um, I figured that would be more critical for new players um, or players who aren't even new, who just want to explore the system and get to know it before jumping in. Much more important than off-board artillery. So I'm going to start with uh, ordnance first, okay? Um, there are six types. Well, let me define what ordnance is. Ordnance is uh, anything that requires a two-hit in other words, to use the two-hit process during combat. And I listed a few of those previously. Now, there's a finer definition of what a gun is. A gun is anything on a 5 8 inch counter. While there are other weapons that require, that's required to use the two-hit process, they're on a half-inch counter. These are not termed guns. They're not called guns, they're called support weapons. And there's a distinction between the two, because often a rule, a rule re refer to a gun, and they mean a 5 8 inch counter that requires a two-hit process, versus a support weapon, which also uses a two-hit process, but is a, a different thing, okay? Um, I'm going to put this support weapon mortar right up here next to this 5 8 inch 81 millimeter German mortar, which is a gun. All of these are ordnance because they require a two-hit process. These are guns. The, this is a support weapon. Okay. Now let's jump into a review of the counters. Let's start with this 81 millimeter mortar up here. Let's start with the most fundamental thing. The uh, number, the large number, usually the largest number on the counter is the caliber size of the gun. And you use that in the two hit process, um, or actually the two kill process. You, there's charts that show caliber sizes um, in, for the two kill tables or on the infantry fire table. There is a column, maybe I'll, maybe I'll pop that up here just to give you a quick preview right up here. I'll paste it in here. Um, the caliber size comes into play on the two kill or on the infantry fire table. And the, all of these have different caliber sizes. So 81 millimeter, 88 millimeter, 75, 20 millimeter, 75 millimeter, 105 millimeter. There's a whole variety of calibers for different nationalities and different types of guns and support weapons. Um, if the gun size has an overscore, it may only fire HE ammunition. If it has an underscore, which none of these have, um, it can only shoot shoot armor piercing ammunition. Okay. Um, the second piece of information, and you'll notice a lot of this information is common 
to all of these counters. But the second important piece of uh, information is obviously the text in the upper right. That tells you what type of gun it is. Uh, mortar, anti-tank gun, infantry gun, anti-aircraft gun, recoilless rifle, and artillery gun. Now there's no, not a whole lot of distinction between all of these. Um, in other words, you could use an artillery gun to fire at a tank, for example. Um, you could use an anti-aircraft gun with this infantry fire equivalent to fire at infantry, and uh, so on. The only the major distinction between these guns, depending on the ammo type, is mortars. They're a little bit different in that they are required to use what's called the area target type, and I'll get into that the different types of target types later on. In other words. It's a direct fire weapon, but it's less, mortars are direct fire. These are all direct fire. You have to see what you're shooting at in order to engage it. But mortars are a little bit different. They lob, I've seen live mortars actually fired out on the range. And they lob shells way up in the air. It takes a long time to go up and come down. They're very imprecise, but you fire lots of rounds. So you use something that's kind of, it's called the area target type. And it kind of... Um, hits everything in a hex, but it hits it at half firepower. Now the rest of these use what's called um, either vehicle target type or area or infantry target type. These they can fire area target type, but it reduces their effectiveness. Mortars can only use area target type. They cannot use vehicle target type or infantry target type. So that's the major distinction between these. But they can all they have mo multiple roles within the ASL system. They can fire at infantry, they can fire vehicles, they can do area target type, they can fire HE, most of the time they can fire high explosive and armor piercing, again, unless there's an overscore, underscore, and other various types of special ammo, which I'll get into here in a minute. Okay, um, this number in brackets is its range. I believe only mortars, I'm not sure I've ever seen any other gun have a range. They have ranges. You can look them up in Chapter H, but their ranges are huge. And in the scale of ASL, um, you'll never be, targets will never be out of range uh, of these guns. But mortars typically have a range in hexes. So this 81 millimeter mortar can fire a minimum of two hexes. So it has to be, the target has to be at least two hexes away and at most 60 hexes away. And this support weapon mortar over here, same, two hexes away. In other words, if something was one hex away adjacent, it could not fire it. It has to be at least here. And 13 hexes away is a max uh, it can fire. Um, this uh, M number here is the manhandling number. In other words, you can, uh, guns you can push. Support weapon ordnance you can carry using the portage point system, which I covered in one of my chapter A uh, videos. This mortar has five portage points. A squad can pick it up and move with it. It's kind of heavy and it'll slow them down, but they can they can just pick it up. A uh, mortar or any of these guns can be manhandled. In other words, it can be pushed. And the higher the manhandling number, the easier it is to push. And I'm not going to get, get into the details of how you actually manhandle. But in, in, in essence, the higher the manhandling number, the easier it is to push. Um, the This mortar has a white background here. And this uh, flak gun has a uh, red, or this PAC-43, sorry, has a red manhandling number. What that means is... It has a white circle. It means it's a small target. If other ordners are trying to hit it, a red number means it's a large target. It makes makes it easier to hit and it adds adds modifiers to the two hit die roll. The number in the box is its rate of fire. It works similar to rate of fire on machine guns from from chapter A. This mortar has a rate of fire of three. By the way, these 81 millimeter German mortars with our rate of fire of three are absolutely deadly. They can be absolutely deadly. 
because every time you fire it, there's essentially a 50% 50 chance you get to take another shot. Um, this uh, Pac-43 has a rate of fire 2, rate of fire 2, rate of fire 3, rate of fire 1, and 1. And that varies depending on the gun, depending on the size, depending on uh, its design and technology, how fast it can reload, and how many t shots it can take. Okay. Uh, let's see, this... Uh, the number to the right, or not the number, the symbol to the right of the caliber size. In this case, we there's a star. There's three. There's a star. There is an L, and there is an LL. That is a gun's barrel length. Basically, it's and it adds modifiers to your two hit depending on uh, the range of the target that you're shooting at. A star is short barrel, so things like mortars, infantry guns. Uh, have short barrels. Harder to hit things at long range. Um, the longer range you get from the target to the target, uh, it adds modifiers that make it makes it harder to hit. L is long barrel, and LL is, uh, I think it's just called very long barrel. Um, these are good at hitting very long targets. These are bad at hitting very long, long targets with the asterisk. Um, the breakdown number of all guns the default break number, it, breakdown number is 12. But in this case, this one has a breakdown in 11. And if it has a breakdown other than 12, same with this uh, anti-aircraft gun, it will be listed on the counter. Uh, and then finally, I think I covered everything on here. Finally, this number in brackets is what's called infantry fire equivalent. How that works is you can basically, you can use the two hit process with this 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun, or conversely, you can, it can be fired as infantry fire equivalent. So basically fires like a machine gun. You can just fi fire four firepower at a target within its covered arc. Um, but by using the infantry fire equivalent, its rate of fire gets reduced by one if you do that. So if I fire this as a machine gun, no, no two hit required. Um, I could fire four, pyre, four firepower, some hex over here, but my rate of fire would be two in that case. Let's flip, uh, I'm going to use the magic of editing and flip all of these over. All right, I'll flip them all over. Backside of all of these counters and vehicles, when I get into, into those later on, have lots of special information on them. And a lot of this information, or all of it, can be found in the Chapter H um, notes for all of these and I'll do a quick review and show you what that looks like right at the end of this video. That way this video will give you an idea of what guns are, what ordnance is, what information there is and where you can find the informa special information about them. So on the back side, if we start up here with the support weapon mortar, um, it has no special ammo. It would be listed here. All it shows is its repair number and its, uh, its breakdown side its repair number and its elimination number when you try to repair it. Now if we go to this uh, gun mortar, same, all of these have uh, repair except uh, these limbered ones here, um, which have a default repair of one and elimination of six, but it shows the limbered side and I'll talk about that in a minute here. Um, this is a quick setup gun. So all these guns that are shown as quick setup they do not have to be uh, limbered to be moved. They can just be picked up and dragged like this big mortar or pushed like this infantry gun or this uh, anti-tank gun, I think it was. Um, you don't have to uh, limber them to do that. The uh, I'll just talk about limbering while I'm, while I'm here. Now these other big guns, in order for them to be moved, whether they have to be towed by a truck or a jeep or what have you, or manhandled or pushed, they first have to be limbered, which means if you've ever seen uh, military guns, um, some of them are towed by trucks and then they're unhooked and they are emplaced. You put down arms that dig into the dirt so when you fire them they don't move, um, hook things up, that kind of thing. All of these have to be first limbered before they can be hooked up and towed or pushed using the manhandle number here on the back. Quick setup, you can just move them. Uh, okay, let's go back to the mortar here. 
It has IR, which is illuminating round. It can fire illuminating rounds if you're playing at night. And it can fire smoke with a depletion number of eight. And I'll get into special ammo and depletion in later videos. Um, up here, this uh, 88 millimeter has no special ammo. It can fire by default high explosive and armor piercing. Uh, manhandle number of five, but only if you limber at first can you move it. Kind of pain in the butt to move these things once they're in uh, place on board and they are unlimbered. Uh, this infantry gun, I think it was, can fire, um, it's quick setup. It can fire heat ammo, which is high explosive anti-tank, which is a little bit different than high explosive. This uh, limbered anti-aircraft gun is interesting because um, in its limbered state, it can actually be fired. Uh, its rate of fire is one less than its unlimbered side. Its infantry fire equivalent is equal, but uh, it's no longer a 20L. It's just a straight 20 millimeter. So it wouldn't get uh, a bonus for long range, long range fire. So you can actually fire this uh, in its limbered state. And this asterisk here means check your chapter H notes. It means there's some information you need to know when you're using this in a scenario. Oh, and in, in, limbered, in its limbered state, its breakdown is 10, okay? Um, this, what it was this, this was a, oh, recoilless, that's what it was, recoilless rifle. It can fire high explosive anti-tank as well with a depletion of six and it's quick setup. And then, then over here to this, I think it was artillery piece, it can fire high explosive anti-tank with a depletion of six. It can fire smoke with a depletion of eight, okay? So that's uh, what the backside of some of these counters look like. Look like. They all will have information on the back, but the information is going to vary depending on the nationality, the type of gun it has, and its capability. So always look at the back of the counter when you're playing with ordnance. If you're playing a vassal, right-click on the counter and go show info, and it'll put information uh, either above the counter or on the side of the counter. A little box will open up that will show all of this uh, information for you. Now, real quick, I'm going to switch to the digital version of the uh, Chapter H rulebook. Not rulebook, the Chapter H book, and show you where you can find information on each of these guns and how to use the Chapter H uh, book. It's not a book you need to read. You don't need to sit down and read the entire book, but you should read if you have any gun, any ordnance, or vehicle later on that is in your order of battle. Crack open chapter H, read the paragraph that uh, describes each of those uh, guns or vehicles, and check the notes. All right, here's a quick look at the chapter H. I'm looking at the electronic version of the uh, ASL real book. Uh, if you're looking at the three ring binder version, you should have this depending on what uh, nationality of modules you've purchased. We're looking at Germans here. Germans came in Beyond Valor module, or it come, everything comes with the EASL rulebook, all the nationalities, all 280 pages or whatever of Chapter H. Um, the pocket version, you can buy a separate version of the pocket version of Chapter H. You can buy the pocket version of the rulebook and the pocket version of Chapter H. Again, the electronic version, it's the whole thing, all the rules, all the notes, it's everything. I recommend getting it. So I've skipped down here to the German notes. Um, you can see here, it's under Chapter H, designed her own, and it has all the nationalities um, from Germans down to Korean War and everything in between. So we're looking at German ordnance. Um, they're listed by number, so that we looked at uh, this 81 millimeter mortar but I'm gonna skip down to another one here. Um, here's a table of all the German uh, ordnance in the order of battle, including the support weapon mortar, which is included right here, the 50 millimeter. But I'm gonna skip down to, oh, this table shows all the pertinent information. So it gives you the gun name, and this is the same for all the nationalities. They have the same table. The type of gun, the caliber size, rate of fire, its breakdown number, if it's not 12, 
its range in hexes, and you can see some of these have a range of 610 hexes. Well, that's well beyond the scale of ASL, so everything will be in range. Um, its manhandling number, its uh, size modifier, uh, the dates in which it was used historically, uh, any type of uh, special information or ammo, it's for design your own, it's a basic point value, it's a rarity factor, and then the notes. And the notes are pretty important. So I'm going to skip down to the anti-aircraft gun. We were looking at the 20, I think it was this one here, the 2 centimeter, 20 millimeter Flak 30. So you can read a little blurb here about when it was used. Usually a little bit, a little historical blurb. But the important thing to note is, uh, and sometimes it'll show errata, like uh, like right here. This one has a little errata note. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Let's do fit width. That'll help. Um, the important thing is to look for these German ordnance notes. This one has C and N for the 20 millimeter. We just looked at. And it probably pertains to this asterisk right here. So let's go down. The the notes are usually at the end of each section. So the if there's notes for vehicles, it'll be at the end of the vehicle section. If there's notes for ordnance, it'll be at the end of the ordnance section, which is right here. And it was C and N. So C is when using limbered fire, the barrel length modification, and it gives you the the rule section on the counter's limbered fire side is used for two hit purposes. The basic two kill number, however, is still determined using the caliber size and length printed on the unlimbered size. And then N is just a historical thing for designer own. It was used in North Africa and these date ranges, etc. cetera. Um, so the, the information for ordnance is a little bit less than vehicles. Vehicles are a little bit, a little bit more complicated. Um, so make sure you check out Chapter H when you have a, a gun within your scenario to make sure you understand its full capability, either from an ammo point of view or uh, limbering point of view or anything. Just make sure you check those notes. They're really quite short, usually only a paragraph and then a couple notes. OK. All right. That's it for our review of uh, guns and ordnance in Chapter C. Just a quick primer. Now we'll get into the actual to hit process and how to use uh, guns in the ASL system. And I'll start that in boot camp number 25.